Jean-Claude Poilevet, a tremendous French chef from Chicago, prepares the first course. It typifies his bistro food at Le Bouchon, a Lyonnais salad. Then David Mercado does the entree at Pazzo in Portland, Oregon. It's sautéed halibut cheeks on fried potatoes and artichokes with roasted peppers and caper sauce. Finally, Norman Love pulls out several stops with a dessert from the Ritz-Carlton Naples. He prepares a ganache-covered banana tart served with Creole sauce. Le Bouchon in the Bucktown area of Chicago might as well be in the Burgundy region of France. Owner chef Jean-Claude Poilevet's small bistro exemplifies what's been called the world's best home cooking. In 1998, he also opened a second bistro, La Sardine. Here is a perfectly executed Lyonnaise salad. Now we're going to show you how to make a salad, which is on every bistro in Lyon, go to Salad Lyonnaise. It includes, it's a warm salad, it's full of cholesterol, it's just great, you know. What you use is a, is a mix of salad. You don't want too tender, you want some frisée, some scarol, some red leaf lettuce, some um, uh, oak leaves, red oaks, or stuff like that. And put it aside, we're going to put some vinaigrette. You need some croutons, and you need some lardons, who are being blanched. Blanched means you cut your bacon, you cut your bacon um, raw, you put it under cold water, bring it to a boil, rinse it with cold water, and you have blanched bacon. The bacon goes over medium heat until the fat is rendered and the bacon is browned. Over here you have water with some white vinegar. It's to poach the eggs. We're going to season the greens with vinaigrette, which is basically two parts olive oil, one part vinegar, red wine vinegar, salt and pepper. Mix it gently. Well, you start to saute your bacon. Or lardon, as we say it in French. And when they start to take a little bit of color, like this, you put your croutons on it. And where is my eggs? At the same time, on the slightly boiling water and vinegar, you're going to put poach your eggs. Garnishing a salad with an egg, either poached or fried, is a classic French gesture. You put vinegar and water to push your eggs so they don't fall apart, otherwise your eggs will be all over the pot. You want just to give a little color on your croutons. You don't want them to be fried to death, you know. You want them to still have some uh, chewiness about them. Almost ready to go. Put your croutons over your salad. to leave dangerously you can put a little bit of the bacon fat on it and you have your eggs over here which are just done now flip it over Chopped parsley garnishes. Et voilà, salad lyonnaise. C'est tout. The best way to eat that is to break the egg open and to mix it up with your greens, and it's wonderful.
David Mercado came to Pazzo in Portland from San Francisco in the early 90s. Those were the good old days, before they invited you to enjoy a stay in the Northwest, then invited you to go back home. A graduate of the California Culinary Academy, Chef Mercado offers this halibut cheeks entree. Now we're going to do the sautéed halibut cheeks with fried potatoes, artichokes, and a sauce of roasted peppers, capers, and Italian parsley. We begin by parboiling the potatoes for about seven or eight minutes and then plunging them in ice water and then slicing them as thin as we can to keep their shape. We want to leave the skins on. Right now I have some uh, Yukon Gold potatoes and some red creamer potatoes. And I recommend the waxy new potatoes to do this dish. The potatoes are sautéed in hot olive oil. Most of the cooking that we do here, most of the sautéing uses olive oil in very high heat. And then we're going to place the potatoes in the pan. Sauté until golden brown. Okay, we have some baby artichokes from California, which we've turned and blanched. We're going to slice them thinly. To get ready to do the halibut cheeks, we have a second saute pan. Which I'll put some oil into. We're going to put the artichokes in with the potatoes. It's best not to move the potatoes around too much. We want them to sit in one spot so they get a uniform brown. Just slightly shake it if you need to make sure it's not sticking. Okay. I want to season the potatoes with salt and black pepper. Right now I have this pan very hot with the oil getting ready for the halibut cheeks. And I have two very large cheeks probably weighing about three to four ounces each. I'm going to take off a little bit of the silver skin that we have. You can use halibut or you could use monkfish for the same dish. Okay, we're going to dredge the cheeks in just a very light dusting of flour, not too much. Our potatoes are getting nicely brown. I'm going to just put them off to the side for a few seconds. I'm going to season the halibut cheeks. Salt and pepper. We're looking for a nice golden brown crust. We're going to turn one time. We're going to place in the oven. And the oven is at 500 degrees. And they'll take about four to six minutes. We don't want them overcooked. They're going to be a little too dry, a little too stringy. We want a little moisture inside. We're going to make our sauce in the same pan that the halibut was cooked in. So that's the nice golden brown that we're looking for. Place this in the oven. 500 degrees for six minutes. Now to get the sauce ready, we have some Italian parsley, once again. We have some roasted red and yellow peppers. These have simply been placed whole on a grill and charred, put in a bag and then peeled and then julienned. It's a technique I think everyone knows. And we have some capers, tiny capers from Spain. In brine, you can also find them in salt. Okay, so the cheeks have been in about six minutes now. They're well browned. I'm going to place them on a separate bowl here to keep warm. Using the same pan that the fish was cooked in, I'm going to add the roasted peppers, red and yellow.
We're going to add the capers. Shallots. Garlic. We're going to deglaze with some lemon juice. A little touch of white wine. We're going to season with some black pepper, a little salt, a touch of halibut stock. We're going to add some Italian parsley. The sauce is finished with butter. The halibut stock in the wine should reduce by half, which it has. The fried potatoes and artichokes begin presentation. I'm going to take the cheek, put that right on top. We have our roasted pepper, caper, and parsley sauce. And I'm going to drape over. Since joining the Ritz-Carlton Hotel Company, corporate pastry chef Norman Love has opened 23 hotels. He obviously still finds time to bake, being one of six pastry chefs selected for the World Pastry Cup 1999 Team USA. From his base in Naples, Florida, he presents banana chocolate tart and Creole sauce. A sweet dough is started with butter, salt, powdered sugar, almond flour, and cake flour. And we're going to start this very slowly. As soon as it starts to incorporate, we're going to add some whole eggs. And we're going to mix this into a very smooth mass. This is very unlike most of the procedures in making, in making a sweet dough or sablis dough. So normally, the butter and the sugar are, are creamed, and eggs are added, and then the dry is added at the end. This is a little bit different technique. More cake flour is added at the end. And once all the ingredients are well incorporated, we're going to scrape down the bowl. And we're going to add a second amount of cake flour. And this is where it needs to be. You need to be a little bit more careful in the mixing. Once the flour is incorporated into the mixture, we need to stop the machine immediately. If you overmix the dough, what happens is, is that you, you develop a little bit of the gluten in the flour, and ultimately the dough will shrink when baked. So it's very, very important to just bring the ingredients together until you have an incorporated mass and stop the machine. In fact, you can even finish the, ma the mass on a floured table, lightly floured table, rather than over mixing in the bowl. So just until the mixture forms a ball, the machine is stopped. I always find it easier to place the dough into a little bit of a rectangle shape. This will ensure that the this makes it easier to when you go to cut the dough once it becomes a firm mass into accurately cutting pieces and sizes that you need. It's then covered with plastic and placed in the refrigerator for about two hours. The rested and chilled dough is rolled out to form a thin crust. Each time lifting the dough prevent the sticking. Once the dough has been rolled out to the thickness that you desire, we take a large cutter and we're going to punch out discs. 
And these discs now can be placed back into a refrigerator, become very easy to use afterwards. The tart dough is formed into ring molds. Once you've rolled all the shells, you're going to place them into the refrigerator and allow the dough to rest for about an hour before you bake them in a 350 or 340 degree oven. You can dock the bottoms just a little bit with a knife to avoid any bubbling on the bottom. They'll keep, you a, keep a very nice and flat shell. The finished tarts are cooled in the ring molds. Meanwhile, sliced bananas are caramelized in butter and brown sugar. And just a touch of lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice. We're going to allow the butter and, and, uh, and sugar to melt together and begin to caramelize. Bananas do not require a lot of cooking time. In fact, the heat that's generated in a pan of caramelized sugar by itself will cook the bananas in, in a very short, short amount of time. So once it starts to, car to melt and caramelize, we can add our bananas. We're going to add a little bit of rum, dark rum. More lemon juice. And I like to finish the, it off with just a little piece of butter again. It helps smooth the taste out a little bit. Heavy cream also could be added if you'd like. A little bit creamier or richer sauce. Because it's with a chocolate tart and the chocolate is such so rich, prefer, prefer to keep the bananas a little bit on the cleaner side, cleaner tasting. I'm going to reduce this caramel just a little bit, thicken it a bit. The bananas go onto a sheet pan to cool. You can place them in the refrigerator, and sure, they can be prepared a day or so in advance. The cool bananas and caramel sauce layer the bottom of the tart shell. Meanwhile, bittersweet chocolate is finely chopped for the ganache filling. And I'm going to add my trimaline, which is an invert sugar. You could use and substitute honey if you wanted or glucose also could be used. This will keep the ganache very, very, very uh, smooth, prevent crystallization. Now hot cream. Secondly is, is that we place the cream in very small intervals, very much like making a mayonnaise, where you're slowly adding your oil to your whisking eggs and wor working very rapidly in the center to create an emulsion. Ganache is an emulsion. And as you notice then, you start to see a very shiny and also a very elastic material, substance. This is the beginning of the emulsion. After all the cream is incorporated, the ganache is finished with butter and further emulsified with a stick blender. The ganache is ladled into the tart. Keep the tart at room temperature. Do not refrigerate. The Creole sauce contains cream, banana puree, lemon juice, and zest. A little bit of saffron. Okay, and some Myers dark rum. And we're going to heat this to a boil. Some sugar also, a little bit. We're going to mix all this together, bring it to a boil, and then with the hand blender, we're going to emulsify and puree all the ingredients very well. The sauce is strained and refrigerated before service. The complex presentation starts with cutting a disc from the center of the tart. 
Then using melted chocolate as a glue, a disc is attached to a chocolate cone. The cone is then placed inside the hole in the tart. It too is held in place with melted chocolate, which is quickly cooled with a little butane spray. Then the circle cutout goes onto the chocolate disc. Well, the ice cream that I prepared for this dessert is a chocolate malted ice cream. So as an accompaniment or an anchor to um, my, my ice cream, I'm going to use the infamous chocolate whoppers, malted balls. And I'm going to secure those just with a touch of chocolate so that they don't slide on the plate. Some of the Creole sauce goes into the chocolate cone. Some chocolate garnishes are added and a canal of chocolate malted milk ice cream finishes the plate. This is probably not a good dessert to serve to your bridge club.